Warning, the following program contains adult language, adult themes, and spoilers. Viewer discretion is advised. Good evening, and welcome to this week's episode of This Week's Episode. It's the week of March 18th, 2021, and this is episode 227. I am your host, Chris Randazzo. Joining me tonight, as always, is nerdy nummy Karen Randazzo. This is some bullshit. Nickelodeon Studio, Angie Fernot. I want a lollipop. And plaid-loving sidekick, Evan Goldstein. Stupid dog. Tonight, Loki gets a new release date. Someone named Kevin can apparently go fuck himself. Tool Time returns to TV, and more. But first, how y'all doing? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> We're here. We are here. It's been a whole week. It ha- Well, it has been a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a whole last week. It has been a whole last week. Oh, wait. True. There was more new. No, that wasn't. Just like assless chaps, honey. That's true. There was a whole conversation earlier today about assless chaps. I was very apparently very wrong about them. Tell me more about your ass week. <laughs> no. You were wrong about a- what, what's so there was no difference. <laughs> what was your opinion about assless chaps that was apparently was incorrect? Chaps and assless chaps. Uh huh. There is no difference between chaps and assless chaps. All chaps are assless. Yes. I was not aware of that. My experience. Do you think is, there were chaps that had ass? Parts? So what it is? Those are just pants. What I'm con- what I'm familiar exactly. with. Exactly. Is- but then why is assless chaps a term? Exactly. First, yes. Is it? It is. Yes, it is. Yeah. And okay. when Evan is done explaining his part, I'll I- explain <laughs> why that's a thing. I'm used to uh, like uh, welding chaps, which have an ass because you like wear them like pants it's it's protective gear so that's what i was used to and my understanding was is that the difference between chaps and assless chaps was the ass <laughs> that's it so i stated that and then apparently with a quick google search someone said there's no fucking reason for there to be those two terms one will suffice because they're redundant yes so exactly as evan was saying uh, the idea of uh, this repetition is it's a tautology. <laughs> Tata. Tata. Ta. It's T A U T O L. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, that's why people say assless chaps. It is literally just the redundancy. It's like the the joke of it. It's not really funny, but people think it's funny. So I, I thought it was a different thing. I, thought it was <laughs> I just I never thought, knew there were anything. I, I, I never knew there were chaps that had an ass. I just think of them as the, like, that's the point. So, yeah. the, but Evan was just saying that that's welding gear. So they're technically well, not chaps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so the hard hitting journalism you come to this week's episode for. Yeah. Assless chaps. They're back and they're better than ever. So how have you guys been? You know, fine. Today is my uh, pandemic versary. This is the is one that? year since I left my office with all my shit, not knowing what the hell was going to happen because we didn't have a work from home uh, agreement yet. So we didn't know if we were allowed. And I went to pick up my son from school. It was his last day of, of school in a school. And uh, wow. yeah, it's been, a, so year, it's been huh? a year, a solid year. Damn. We've handled it well as a country, I think. <laughs> Every, everything has just gone gone swimmingly. We yeah. Listen, yeah. we're role models. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, for sure. I could I could attest to that every day going to work. It's the crop cream of society. <laughs> Everybody doing the right thing. We are the cream of the crop. We do love cream after all. This is true. This is true. Oh. I like completely forgot what time is. I am a, I'm I, the thirteenth was my one year. Really? Yeah. I have no idea when when mine was. I honestly don't remember what my last day of work was, when they when they told me to go home and pack up pack up my stuff. But you know whatever. I think it was later in the week, same week as me. Yeah, probably makes sense. 
And then I was technically still employed with them for quite a while afterwards. The company was very nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't very nice to you in the way that your job got, you know, eliminated out from under you. Yes, well, that was that was. But they were that lovely. Wasn't really, <laughs> that wasn't really them. That was the. That wasn't the company. That was someone else. Yes, this, uh, the I worked for a contractor, and the. Uh, contract was very artfully uh dodged to save uh save people some money 15 cents nice That's all I, all i can think of is geico now it's, it's not cents it's percent but it just sticks mm-hmm. it's a wonderful country we live in anyway uh what have you guys <laughs> been watching huh anything good anything fun anything fancy on television yeah actually what do you got on uh okay so um I had started watching uh, some television shows based on recommendations, so we did talk about Bridgerton, and then after that, uh, I have started watching, I have not gotten too far into it yet, but I'm watching A Discovery of Witches, and I don't know if you guys know anything about this show. Do you? I know that it's based on a book, and that I have had some interest, but haven't ever gotten to it. Okay, um, I am gonna say right now i am definitely it's it's uh, i guess oh how do i put this this another show with a lot of sex no actually no thank god (laughs) i'm so over that uh but this is a show that has how do i say this um it's kind of i don't it's not necessarily predictable but it is like very by the book yeah formulaic formulaic there's the word thank you karen you're welcome so that one's free just for you <laughs> uh so yeah it's very formulaic but it's it's pretty interesting the visuals are cool uh the story is still fun to watch uh i did get a good laugh out of it because i'm about three episodes into the series right now and uh i think it was actually on episode three where this conversation starts between the two leads it's a male and female and you know of course they have this romance story and he quote unquote craves her because he's a vampire and she's a witch and you know he just he's into her and oh my god did i get some hardcore twilight vibes from this scene it was just (laughs) you don't know what i'm like and you won't like what you see and she was like i'm not afraid and it was oh my god so over the top (laughs) intense staring it was just oh my god staring i like that it was (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he did staring without the sparkle. So, uh, ladies, <laughs> I, I was waiting for a riff track reference. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It, <laughs> Oh, good. We broke Evan. <laughs> oh, I'm like today for some reason I broke it like four times to the point where like I had to stop it because like I, I wasn't good letting earlier. air in. <laughs> um, yeah. So so I I've had some good moments with that that were just oh, pure comedy gold, which of course they were not meant to be, which made it better. So that's been pretty fun. Uh, I'm currently watching a show called uh, G- Ginny in Georgia. Yes, how okay. is it? I uh, uh, again, it's I I like it. I think it's it's interesting. It does feel kind of like a teen melodrama, but the mom is a con artist basically and I'm like I'm watching it. I'm definitely enjoying it. It's just so weird for me because a lot of these shows like I kind of just take a step back and I look at them and I'm like okay what are they trying to sell me at this point like what what is this message that they're trying to shove down my throat because I keep feeling like there's always something it's the um, inhumans right they're trying to sell you on the inhuman right <laughs> well, thing. but I gotta tell you when I one of the things I like about this show is that it has I feel like it has a good perspective on like teenage uh psychology like there was a scene where there was a sleepover at the high school and the premise of the show for anyone who doesn't know is uh Ginny is Virginia, Georgia is the mom and uh Georgia names her children after the places where they were born. So she has a daughter named G- Virginia and a son named Austin. Uh <clears throat> so she another one named Van and another right. one named Escalator. Yes. Uh, Nobody named Carson. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> well played. Well, that's actually someone my sister knows had their child in a car, and that's what they named him. Wow. Yeah. Nice. 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 <laughs> Please tell me they have another kid named Back Alley. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on. Uh, so, <laughs> bathroom stall. Okay, I'm done. So, uh, it's pronounced bathroom stall. <laughs> 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 so uh anyway <laughs> con artist i'm sorry <laughs> the <thrum stall. laughs> so yeah this this is basically this this mom and and what she kind of puts her kids through but this it's it's so it's a little bit of perspective from the mom and a little bit of perspective from the teenage daughter and uh you get occasional flashbacks of the mom and what happened to her because she was pregnant as a teenager and that's how when she had her first kid so Yada yada, but one of the scenes that I really liked recently was they did this this uh, overnight sleepover for the high school students, and one of the characters in Ginny's friend group has like body dysmorphia, and she actually duct taped her thighs to make a wider thigh gap. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, let me woman explain for you. Thigh gap is when you stand up relatively straight and your thighs don't touch and there is a gap in between. And it is something that is quite often photoshopped to look like legs are very, very slender and the gap is even wider on models who are already fucking skinny and uh, please eat a sandwich. (laughs) Then they, you know, (laughs) just make it worse for everybody with Photoshop. So this is this girl has this problem and she duct tapes her freaking thighs and then puts jeans on over it to increase her thigh gap. And I've never actually seen anything representing that on television. And, and you know, there's other stuff with the other girls and how they express their teenage angst. Um, but it, it's just really, I don't know, like the way that they do this, the way they're approaching the storytelling and the way that they just have these girls like self-assessing and then kind of like not wanting to show their insecurity in front of their friends but you get to see the private moment because it's a television show i just think that it was a a really good way of of showing how teenagers interact with one another and even when they have best friends there are still things that they're hiding and it's kind of exploratory into what they're experiencing but not really expressing to anyone outside of themselves uh and the things that they're internalizing that people don't think about so yeah, it's been pretty cool. Uh, otherwise, it's just kind of entertaining television, and I like the characters, and that's pretty much it. I kind of want to see what's going to happen and when things are going to catch up to Georgia and how she's going to get out of it because whew, she is some kind of special. Um, and then I watched Firefly Lane recently. That was the other one. And oh, that's on my list. That one I really, really liked. I love Catherine Hagel, so <laughs> it was not hard to watch. Um, and the characters were just absolutely fascinating. Their friendship is so interesting. The psychology of, of what these characters experience and, and, uh, who they are, how they handle the world as women, especially women in the eighties, and then how they deal with issues in the two thousands, like it jumps to present time, uh, the friendship that they built and how it's evolved over the years and like parallels they'll pick kind of like a theme so like one episode was kind of about like Christmas and they'll have parallels between the past and the present and how Christmas has evolved for them in their lives and the the landmarks that that occurred in in their lives and in their friendships um but yeah that one that one kind of hit home for me because uh, I have a friend who has recently moved further away than where she used to live so she's now uh, on the other side of the country so even when I go back home to visit she's no longer there and she was the one who would send me text messages and be like I miss you you know I just watched the scene in Firefly Lane it made me think of you yada 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 and there's just really tender moments in the friendship where I would text her and be like I know what you were talking about now so it, there was a lot of nostalgia it was really nice but I recommend it I would definitely like to hear your thoughts on it because they very clearly are promoting like sort of this very strong female viewpoint um and i think that they did it in a way that didn't make me feel like they were shoving feminism down my throat which means that it should be palatable for most people um but it's yeah it's a really good show i liked it a lot 
but that's that's okay. pretty much the majority of what I've been watching. I I wasn't feeling well recently, so I had a little time for television, and now I haven't I was done anything. Say that's a lot for you. Yeah, I got through a whole series. <laughs> it was uh, pretty I cool. Will, I will bump Firefly Lane to the top of my list uh, as soon as I finish what I'm on. Nice. And what are you on? Oh, uh, I took back the first half of season two of Dickinson. Nice. In the last couple of days. Uh, show remains awesome. Um, <laughs> the other night I was watching and I called Chris who finished his podcast and he called him into the room and I was like, hey, look who it is. And he looked at the guy on the screen for a few seconds, couldn't figure out who it, uh, who it, is, who it is. So I like... I started to play again and pause at a different angle and so he could see his face better. And I was like, oh, it's Danny Rand. <laughs> <laughs> and then he walked out of the room and he's like, let me know if he tells anyone he's the immortal Iron Fist. <laughs> <laughs> Which in, in Dickinson would be pretty effing hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's in it this season and uh, it's pretty good. The, the interesting thing that I find about this season is they... Uh, they open the season with a voiceover about, it's not, um, it's just kind of, I think it's Emily's voice, but it's just kind of um, from a narrator perspective where it mm -hmm. says, um, there's not much written about her life after her brother and her friend got married. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so like, basically from this point on, we're just making shit up as we go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> like, That's awesome. Okay. Fair. Fine. <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been good. Uh, show is, you know, just as good as it was in season one and I am a happy person. Nice. And I think that's it. Uh, Chris and I kept going. I think we just only got maybe one or two more episodes of resident alien. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Still into it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a good cool. time. Cool. Yeah. It was for lack of time, not for lack of whatever. It we watched the, we, it's only been a week. So, like, <laughs> yeah, and and one of I mean, Chris works nights a lot, and then one of the nights we took to watch the Coming to America sequel. <laughs> oh, and? did you? Yeah, uh, we were gonna watch it a week or two ago, and then uh, it was revealed to me that Chris has never seen the original. Um, so we fixed that. <laughs> good one, um, and it was really good. I enjoyed it. It was the really first good. One and or the it's cool one. when that kind of stuff happens because I have zero nostalgic connection to it. So it's just a good movie because I enjoyed it. Both of them, or did you the not? The second one was all right. Okay. Second one okay. was all right. Yeah, it it was it was better than it had any right to be. Okay, but that doesn't mean it was good. Okay, yeah, it was it was. When you say something like that, then you think of something that's like it's not on the same level as like Bill and Ted Face the Music or Cobra Kai, but it's uh, it was still it was still decent. I was entertained by it. It wasn't like I I laughed a lot more at the at the original one. Okay. It just came out of nowhere for me. Like, all of a sudden, there was an advertisement for it on one of, like, the streaming sticks. So, like, oh, they're doing that? Oh, okay. That was... Yeah, I'm sure this was originally intended to be a theatrical release, but, you know, the world happened. COVID. <laughs> but it's a... Uh, it was... it was There were some uh, some neat cameos in there. I really enjoyed seeing Wesley Snipes be a goofball. That was kind of cool. <laughs> I truly believe that, man. It's crazy. <laughs> Like, I think he's just nuts. I was just trying to think if I've ever seen him do anything other than Blade, and the answer is no. I literally just associate him. They're synonymous. Blade is Wesley Snipes. There was a movie with him and a, a train. Like a money money train? Was he a vampire? No. No, I don't, he was I don't a get a cop it. or a bank robber or something. Uh, he, he, like he, Demolition he, Man, the one Demolition that everyone oh! knows. Because of him, we all know that. that white men can't jump. <laughs> That's true. And he was Passenger 57. Yeah, she was. Look what's, at this. Wait, what's Passenger 57? Oh, girl. What? Don't old girl me. What? <laughs> Passenger 50. Well, come on. It's not that famous of a movie. Was it that he was no, um, an air marshal, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. An oh. It was like plane. some guys trying to hide, hijack an airplane and he stopped them. Okay. Wait, I think I have heard of that. It's, okay. <laughs> you may have seen some of it. It, it's I'm awesome. Wesley Snipes. You may know me from such <laughs> films as. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Wesley Snipes, vampires on a plane. Nice. <laughs> Wesley Snipes, notwithstanding, and we also have continued on with Dragon Prince. I think we're now into season three, like middle of midway through season three, so we're almost caught up. Nice. Ooh. Okay. Cool. 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 And the one thing that I um, kind of realized this 
in this last chunk of it is how um, cool I think it is that they are tell so much of the story that they're telling happened before this the start of the series like a lot of it not a lot of it but a good like important pieces of the story are in flashback like when they right. went to get the heart of the iron the lava giant or whatever and the queen mm-hmm. died and when they um when they went to kill the dragon which that was the episode we watched tonight and it was heartbreaking watching that dragon die I was really upset about it. Aww. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I like, I, I do vaguely remember that being a part of the story. Um, again, I feel like we absolutely have to start from the beginning and rewatch everything. But I want, like, I like hearing your your parts. But I do remember, like, the 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 gut wrenching despair that I felt. Also, I tend to like dragons more than people, even when they're the villains. So, <laughs> we watched yeah, Drain of Fire. Yeah, was totally not the villain. Right. Yeah, right. he was not the villain and he's a parent. And mm-hmm. he was just trying to get back to his unborn child And when these assholes came along and were like, we're gonna fucking kill you now. We want revenge. Like, they're not, they're not even pretending that they're out there for like any good reason they're like no we want revenge we want vengeance for what you did because we trespassed on your land and killed a giant because we wanted some shit and he's just like look you can leave all right normally i'd kill the shit out of you right here and now but you can leave (laughs) just do it now (laughs) because i got shit going on and they're like no fuck you i'm gonna throw this spear and he's like ah shit that was a was bad just time. Like that? I, I, I feel like I was... like the dragons a lot in this show. I like so much about this show. I just uh, they uh, we've we're we're past the part where Ray- Rayla and Callum like get together, okay. which uh, is neat. I don't know. I have mixed feelings on it. Like it, it never even occurred to me, and I guess that's kind of like the way it was written in the show. Like it never really occurred to me the same way it never really occurred to Callum. Like when she kissed him in the first place, and he was all surprised by. It. I was like, "Oh, I didn't see that coming." <laughs> then, uh, no, I, yeah, I get it. Neither did he. I'm cool with it. Now that I knew it was coming, I've I see more of it now as I that I just didn't even notice the first time around because I'm a goober, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, as a hopeless romantic, I've been waiting for that. <laughs> well, I've always been so like, I'm over here like hoping Claudia gets better because I like Claudia and Callum. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why the Rayla thing caught me so completely off guard, because I was just hoping for some sort of... He was over here shipping that. Yeah, I'm over here shipping the wrong, uh, yeah, the wrong characters. You were, you were into the trash. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I had strong feelings. I will not apologize. Also, to, now that Soren is like solely just a idiot, <laughs> <laughs> like he's no longer evil, he's no longer trying to kill the princes to he's please his dad, he's just a moron. <laughs> yeah, I like him so much. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, it is kind of great. <laughs> what did he say? Hey, he's great or something like that. Hey, he's great. <laughs> he's a big, dumb, lovable idiot. That's what he is. <clears throat> Good. Oh my god! Kids still enjoy- are you wa- you're watching it with the kids, right? Are they still in- invested? They are. Yeah, yeah, they are, and they're still invested. Good. I like. We only have uh, three episodes left, so we're Aww. gonna have to figure something out. Oh no! What to do? Well, right, you had yeah, a couple cause... options before. Before you went on to the Dragon Prince, you you. I think... No, I just meant. I think she means like, because we're not gonna be here this weekend. No, I just meant what's going to be next. Oh, yeah, what's going to be next. Yeah, well, we had options. And... Not going to be there. You're coming to visit, right? <laughs> just kidding. Sorry. Yep. I hate living alone. Thanks, son. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> oh, alone so much. <laughs> uh, all right, well. I'll... Yeah, uh, well, uh, that's that's been, uh, I don't have much to add, so I'll just go ahead and throw in that, uh, yeah, we watched more Dragon Prince uh, and the only thing I have to talk about is something I want to watch. What's that? There's a, a Nintendo documentary series on Crackle okay. called Playing With Power. That's supposed to be really, really good. Okay. And I'd like to watch it, but I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it just schedule? Like, is that... It's also on Crackle. <laughs> Crackle is apparently free because I downloaded it so I could see if I could get it. And it's like, oh, okay, so I can just watch this now. All right. <laughs> There's commercials, but whatever. 
So, uh, yeah. Marshall's <laughs> playing with power. I'm, uh, I'm totally interested in watching it. Yeah, but it's, it's all scheduling time. I don't really have time to myself to watch mm-hmm. things. So, and I already subjected Karen to an entire video game documentary series. I'm not going to do that to her again. Aww. <laughs> Even though she did, you know, somewhat enjoy the other one, at least. Which so. one was that one? God, what was that one? That was the... I don't know what the hell it was called. <laughs> yeah, I forget what it was called, too. It was the Netflix one that was was, was pretty oh, good. Oh, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Uh, Okay. I remember. It was, it was not too long ago. Yeah, it was pretty recent. Uh, this one really goes around specifically with Nintendo stuff, and I'm like, I follow some of the people that were interviewed for the show, and that's really interesting to me. Uh, specifically, like, early Nintendo history, which is not st- stuff that's really well documented. Uh, not, re- not really nin- early Nintendo of America history. Um, but this uh, guy who was kind of like the face of the company back then, Howard Phillips, uh, he retired from Nintendo a while ago, and he's like writing a book now, and he's been telling a lot more stories that are just absolutely fascinating. So I would like to watch it, and hopefully I will someday. <laughs> cool. Um, the re- okay, so I'm going to real quick, I'm still doing my catch-up of, well, what flying through last man standing i'm watching william shatner tell me about monsters and ghosts and still watching paranormal stuff caught on film but today for the the show i wanted to i watched two episodes of a show that i or of shows that i've wanted to watch and talk about because i I haven't none of us have actually watched or spoken about it i watched the first episode of superman and lois i knew oh yeah how is it um the first i enjoyed it i've come to realized that superman should not be a dad um really tough like it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a family drama because lots of his parents deaths dealing with that and and now he's got twin kids and of course like one of them's a a sports guy and the other one's kind of emo and we're trying to figure out like do they have powers and whatnot and they don't know and there was a whole scene where eventually in the first episode the kids find out that he has powers and it's because he tells them and then they bold face look at him and go no no you're not superman we've seen him and then clark takes off of his takes off his glasses and lifts up a truck don't that, lie. He didn't need to lift that truck. I, it was the glasses. I, like, I really just wanted them to stop before they lifted the truck, but they did not. He, he, he it's, it's more. It's, I feel like they have a, a good path to go with the, the family drama about him dealing with his marriage with Lois and raising two like their teen kids. They're just they, they're in high school, um, but then all of a sudden they threw in this mysterious villain who knows about his Kryptonian past. So. It's it graphically it looks great. Um, special effect like it's it's CW that like they're doing a good job with it. Um, one big shout out that like tickled me just it was for it was an Easter egg just for someone like me. Um, in the Tom Welling be- showed up close close in the very beginning of the episode they're doing the voiceover and they're explaining everything and they're showing him. Uh, Tyler Lawton, is that his name? Something like that. I, he's he plays a great Superman, but they younged him up for like the beginning of his career. And there's a scene where he he saves this this young kid, uh, like this car is gonna crush him, but he ends up catching the tr- the car and, and landing it safely. And when he stands up, he's wearing the Max Fleischer costume. <gasps> cool. And that is old school Superman cartoon, you know, black emblem with the red lettering on it, like real old school like no reason for that to be a thing it is not in any of the movies or the television show like that is a touch for just like real comic book fans and i thought that was that was really nice um i am gonna watch a couple of i'm gonna i'm gonna enjoy it i'm gonna watch it i I enjoyed it do you think it's gonna be one of those we watch it together we can can, can watch it together it's i just don't want it to like I felt the same way about Flash. I really enjoyed Flash, and I like. And then all of a sudden, I don't want it to fade away again, kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. that's what what seems to happen with the CW shows. And I'll say, I did tell him, like, please vet this show for me because he put it on today, and I was like, I know that we talked about watching this together, but like, I want your thoughts first because I have not been able to get back into a CW show in a couple years now. 
Yeah, and, and I didn't know where well. they were going to go with it. And it's, it's, I mean, most of the CW shows had the same flavor to them. Like, you can feel that they were tied together. I don't, this doesn't feel like it's tied to that universe as of yet. Um, it is still early in like, the season. Like, so. none of, like, the Arrowverse stuff, you mean? Well, no, like, you could tell that the Flash and the Arrow take place in the same continuity. Like, right. just by the, the, the storytelling and the feel of the show. This just feels like CW. That's it. Like it's that 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 I don't, doesn't necessarily have to, it's a superhero CW show. It doesn't necessarily have to take place in the Arrowverse. But it prob- it does. Um another show that I was really interested in watching that I caught the first episode of just to to vet it out is a show called Clarice. Oh, yes. How is it? And I really really enjoyed it. Clarice is about Clarice Starling. Hello Clarice. And it's about that character after the Buffalo Bill, like after they kill Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. After she put the lotion in the basket? Yeah, after she put the lotion in the basket. And, and now she is, she's still riding that wave of fame. And this is what happens, like her next case. Because she's like, what people don't really remember was she was a brand she new was, cop. She was, yeah, she was she fresh. Was, she, was, she should not have been the lead of this that crime hunting caper thing like she was out of the academy and now this is like she did so well or she's still so famous that they're bringing her into another event because it's not it's a crime and then there's people are being murdered for a reason and it's not a, just like there's there's oh, a lot I get of it. intrigue she- going on and it's it seems like it should be way out of her league, but she is handling this new team, and it's 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 done really well. Like I'm really pleasantly surprised with it. Like the girl does a great Southern accent. Like I feel it's it's. I was totally surprised how well they did it and how much I'm enjoying it. So that is definitely another show that I'm going to continue watching. Um, and lastly, wait, can I ask a quick sure. question? Is that one um is that one scary at all? Like, or is it suspenseful? It's, it's or is dramatic. It just... it's, it's, it's suspenseful. Okay. It's not scary, like, you know, American Horror Story kind of scary. No. no well, that's just They do a lot of flashbacks point, but... to the, the movie because she she's dealing with PTSD. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, is if it wasn't traumatic enough, let's give her a team. Right. And that's the thing. Like, the team is made up of certain characters. Like, there's Cal Penn is in it, which is funny. He's either Harold or Kumar. I can't remember which character he played. But there's, you know... F- one, two, three, four, four guys that are all seasoned FBI agents, and then like the attorney general brings this rookie in, but being brought in because the attorney general is the mother of the girl who she saved from the Buffalo Bill pit. So that there's a storyline between Clarice and that girl where there's been no communication, and like it's there's a lot of storyline here that I just didn't expect. I thought it was just going to be another. You know, cop drama kind of thing, which yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. But they're they're doing a they're doing a really really good job with it. Um, and today I came across a show that is a couple of years old, and I wanted to check it out because I, Chris, I felt this would be up your alley. Yeah. It is called. Hold on, let me let me get back to it because I want to get the title correct. Um, video game box art. And the stories uh, behind the covers. Okay? Video game box art and the stories. I feel like I've heard of this. So there was that, that, that show that we were talking just recently where the guys were going cross country. Yeah, uh, the Nintendo Quest. Okay, so that I saw the bigger of the two guys in this episode. So I feel and the that, that docuseries is done or at least supported financially by a video game store. So they are in the credits of this show also. But the first episode, which I, all I seen is one, and it, it, the main focus of this was about the guy who did the that infamous Mega Man Two artwork, and he did like eighty other different cover pieces, and like it was like I love art, and mm-hmm. specifically like the thought processes and how it's made and where it goes and like that that kind of the, the process, not necessarily the finished thing. Um, but the stories behind, like it was, you know, half hour, the story, it was, 
so interesting that <laughs> like I did not I kn- I the only reason I knew about the Mega Man Two artwork was because you told me it looks ridiculous and it is incorrect. I mean, the Mega Man One box art is the famously ridiculous one, but Mega Man Two is pretty darn silly on its own. Well, he's carrying a gun. Well, have you seen Mega Man One's box art? <laughs> well, see, but uh, this is the thing: is a the, the Mega Man Two is a finished, painted piece of artwork that was incorrect because they didn't know that he because they were looking at the sprite and they couldn't tell he had a cannon art. Blah 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 blah. Like I like I knew that story, so that's why I I watched this episode to see what it was. They have an episode about Atari box art, like it for a person that mildly interested in video games but like extremely interested in art this is right up my alley and i think it might be for you as well because it's a video game but it's another aspect of it the the oh it's definitely up my alley i I, honestly i have heard of it and i totally forgot that it even existed because i don't get a lot of time to watch tv by myself but yeah this is definitely something i'm interested i also follow a uh a really, 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 really fascinating Twitter account um, called Art of Nintendo Power. Uh, he's a guy who has been collecting the original artwork that was used for all the covers and uh, articles inside of Nintendo Power back mm-hmm. in the day. So he has like a glass case with the clay figure that was made of Mega Man for like one of the box, uh, one of the the magazine covers, and all of this original artwork, like things that you would think are just reprints of key art, but were actually things that were. Hi- artists were hired to do and then he he has them all framed it's it's gorgeous i'll send you a link to his twitter account because just going through it and and seeing his collection is just absolutely insane and it's some really wild and interesting art because it goes all over the place because it wasn't just you know paintings and Mm -hmm. and drawings and stuff there was also like clay figurines and stuff and i threw the original Mega Man one box art into the uh i'm sure the chat i i am sure it was shown in this episode um because they talked, the guy's name was Mark Erickson. Erickson name sounds familiar. Uh, he did like eighty plus video game covers or co- box arts, if you will. Um, but a, a fun thing in this episode for me was they also spoke to Al Lowell. Or Al Lowell, L O W E. He's the guy who created or uh, Leisure Suit Larry. Mm-hmm. And they 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 explained what because it. <laughs> That video game was deemed, was, okay, was presented as being dirty. And it really isn't. It's more funny. It's a comedy about an idiot trying to get laid. That's really what the video game is about. You don't, there's no nudity. There's, there's, it's, there's no foul language. It's just funny. Um, you might want to look at chat or not, (laughs) uh, and (laughs) never look at box art again. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, That's one box that no one wants. Yeah. So like that's 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 great. <laughs> um, it gets better the more you look at it too. It's it's a legend. But yeah, that, that's the thing. The Mega Man Two box art is pretty ridiculously weird too. And I, I I've heard that story a bunch. Like they explained what these characters were, and you can see the through line between what they look like in the game and what they look like on this cover art. But like, man, the Mega Man One. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I like, concur. I concur. It, it's a rough one. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I, I was that was a happy find. Like it was, a, you know, twenty minutes of my time. Like I, I got some really interesting behind the scenes inter- information about video game art. So, and I wanted to I pass that to along that. to you. I'll I'll throw it on the pile. There you go. <laughs> so yep, yeah, that's that's it, and pretty much just falling asleep to the dulcet tones of William Shatner every night. Which Except is awesome. for that one the other night. No, 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 no. Well, I don't. What? Do you, what? Oh, there was one. Okay, so this, for anybody who hasn't gotten with the program, get with the program. We watch paranormal shows going to bed because it's super healthy and normal. Um, <laughs> I like we, it. <laughs> we were watching an episode the other night of Paranormal Caught on Camera, and they, this show will do, like, I don't even know how many people per episode, at least three or four and this one fucking guy goes into an abandoned house and he, he's 
I can't remember what country he's in. He was, he was Middle Eastern and he's in this abandoned place and in the Middle East, like a jinn are part of their lore. Oh, so there's the, this story yeah, about, yeah, yeah, okay. you know, you know the one. <laughs> so there's this fucking story about how, you know, uh, this place is possibly like haunted by a jinn who was trying to possess a girl and the family had to leave because they like witnessed this jinn literally beat the shit out of their daughter. Um, Apparently, you know, like a, a fucking for those that ghost don't know, genie. G- genies came from jinn. Like that's it. They, yeah, they're, they're Aladdin. Aladdin. False. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so we're lying in bed. She is. She's borderline passed out. I still got at least twenty minutes before the melatonin kicks in. And there's this, and I'm pretty sure it was the scene where the, he is filming, like, it's like camera phone filming, and he's looking what? down a hallway, and there's clearly a little kid peeks his head. No, like it was fucking before that. It was before that. <laughs> it was so much worse than that. There was a fucking grudge girl in the mirror. So he's going through this house, and he's like, he hears a banging noise because his door shuts behind him, and he whips around, and he's all freaked out. And then he's like, hello, is anybody here? And then he's... Like, like there's another bang and then he's like praise Allah and he starts like praying and then he gets the genius fucking idea to turn around and look in a mirror and he does and then you see the silhouette of this little like half his so, size person poke their head out and it's just a black silhouette but you can tell they have like slightly longer than shoulder length black hair <laughs> and then they just like lean they like popped out to the side and then lean back in like all sassy and bitchy it fucking like <laughs> So no, what it looked like no. to me when I was watching it is that he turned just right and he was wearing a backpack. That's what it looked no, like to did. me. No, we see the hair. <laughs> and she freaked out. Then maybe if his backpack had a wig. <laughs> so then there's a scene where the same dude is filming down the hallway, and little kid pops his head out, and like this one you saw, arm, shoulder neck and head yeah like it was as saw, if the grudge saw... and the ring decided to go on a date together and just terrorize somebody in a house and i'm sitting there and my brain i like i vocalize and then quickly logic everything out like i say it I, but before i could say anything she's sitting there like nope 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 <laughs> not watching this anymore no <laughs> I'm like peeking over the covers and I was like, cool, I can't unsee this ever and I will forever be haunted. Oh, it's such a good show. It's so entertaining. Oh, those <laughs> just get that. That was bad. Like most of the time I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. You're, you and your stupid like string rigging and yeah, I'm sure this is fake. But that I don't know why that one just mm-mm. there was there was one episode that I enjoyed where this this it was I'm pretty sure it was in Poland. And this guy had a farm and he went from his house because he heard a noise in his barn and he walked into the barn and there was uh, he had a camera phone, of course, and there was this gurgling, screeching noise. Well, that thing was creepy. And there was a build like a, a shed inside of his barn and you saw this head poke up from above the shed and this bang and... There was no investigation by this guy. The dude just turned and ran. <laughs> he got it right. He valued his life. Him and his buddy because his buddy was filming behind him, and all you saw was the camera just looking at the guy in front of his feet as they were both trucking out of this barn. God, I love that stuff. So much but yeah, that's what we've been doing. <laughs> it's very healthy. Well, it certainly sounds like a hoot. And a holler. Get it? Because it the screams. I got <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're going to take ourselves a quick break. And when we come back, it is a news week. So we're going to go over things that have been going on in the news. You're listening to this week's episode from GeekAid.com. Stick around. And now here's a quick look at some of the other original content available now from our partners and GeekAid.com. First up. Video game music. It's the single greatest thing in the history of mankind, next to hyperbole, of course. But while many people love it, few do the same way Chris does. That is worded very weirdly. Hold on, try this again. (laughs) But while many people love it, few do the same way Chris does, which is why he's created his own YouTube channel called Wave Back Overplay, spinning off from his fantastic VGM podcast, which I totally follow, like, and subscribe to. Wave Back Overplay takes two different versions of the same video game song, matches the pitch and tempo, and plays them on top of one another. This week, 
he finished posting the rest of the tracks from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, where he mashed up music from the smash hit Switch game with their original counterparts. If this sounds like a good time, head on over to the Waveback Overplay YouTube channel and give it a subscribe. Just follow the link in the show notes and a fountain of awesome video game musical mashups await you. Wow, well done, honey. <clears throat> Next, on the all-new episode of the Stone Age Gamer Podcast, a show that I painstakingly edit on a weekly basis with my bare hands, Dan and Chris hit their landmark 350th episode. What did they do to celebrate? Nothing. They promptly forgot which episode they were on and scheduled an interview instead. The good news is, the interview was very interesting. They got to sit down with Christoph Galati. Chris? Sure. All right. Because I know there was some... I couldn't understand him either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the creator of Save Me, Mr. Taco, and discuss all the wacky goings on with this recently delisted game. The new version will the new version be as definitive as we all hope? What color should fic? <laughs> I'm sorry. What color should fictional octopus be? Does this Frenchman think baguettes are the best bread? Find out on the Stone Age Gamer Podcast, episode 350. <clears throat> Taco Talk with Chris Galati. <laughs> I hate you, Chris. You love him. <clears throat> Finally, Tetris and Dr. Mario are two of the most revered puzzle games of all time, but which one is better and who gets to make this ultimate decision? Dean the Vest Lord, Mike Nintendude, and a man known only as the Truth gather together and try to figure out which puzzler reigns supreme. It was also Mike's birthday recently, and I'm sure it would make him very happy to hear that you listened to his podcast. Give a listen to A Dude, A Lord, and the Truth, Episode 6, Tetris vs. Dr. Mario. And tell a friend, because good friends recommend good podcasts. And you're a good friend, right? For all this great content and more from us and our partners, be sure to keep your eyes on geekade.com. And we're back. Thanks for sticking around through our uh, painstakingly crafted commercials. It's time for some news. Let's see what's going on in the world of television. Starting at the top here, we've got a report from Deadline.com that... Wednesday Adams, live action series from Tim Burton, ordered by Netflix, Al Gugh, and Miles Millar to showrun. Uh, so, seems like a match made in heaven, but uh, as I will always be wary of Tim Burton related things that seem like a match made in heaven, uh, could go horribly awry. What do Just you guys think? Just waiting to see how he like figures uh, Johnny Depp and, and Helena Bonham Carter into this. Uh, that, yeah. I, I fully mm -hmm. believe it will be... Gomez and Morticia Adams. Or, oh, I mean, Johnny Depp cool. could be playing Wednesday. Like, you know, <laughs> could just, yeah. 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 So there's not much he can't do. I'd believe it. Uh, I, it yeah. makes a lot of sense. I'm just... Uh, Did she always have psychic powers? Am I crazy? Is this new? I didn't know. I she, she, don't remember the character having psychic powers. But then again, I don't know anything about the Adams Family outside of those uh, original movies. I didn't same. watch the old TV shows kind of before my time so okay yeah i watched monsters? the monsters i didn't watch this yeah they so. weren't monsters. right they were just i totally did humans. the monsters mm -hmm. i was in on that but yeah adam's family was not my bag okay but yes to answer your question chris yes this seems like a match made in heaven the man but so did planet of the apes and you really? know you wait tim burton planet of the apes yeah tim burton's planet of the apes why would you the, think i'm that going after a... my monkey movie that was but why would you think that that is a match made in heaven? What leads you down it's, the path of Tim Burton plus monkeys equals good? I, I don't know. It just seemed right. Tim Burton, Planet of the Apes. How could that go wrong? Seems perfect. You th you, you throw I found the Transformer in it. and Like, <laughs> that's bad. But anywho, okay. It just it just seemed like at the at the time, it seemed like such a good idea. Okay. And, uh, you know, he was doing... Yeah, it was a while ago, and he's done much more crappy movies since then. This, but this you know, is true. This is true. It's still Tim Burton. He's still capable of great, great things. And I have, I have, I have uh, tepidly high hopes, <laughs> and hope that I'm using the word tepid correctly. I like the art for this series. Just that image of her playing the cello with a knife. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That got me. I'm not gonna lie. That definitely got me. 
And I yeah, I mean, it looks live action, right? It looks the shit right yeah. there. You know, looks looks what we want. Yeah, and I I like this. I mean, I know a lot of people uh, in my friend group, weirdly enough, uh, and just in my personal life, are people who appreciate Tim Burton uh, esque things, and also I uh, are weirdly enough friend uh, fans of Wednesday Adams. Uh, like even even my sister, like she's going to be interested in this, and she doesn't even watch television. So I I really hope it's good. Me but, too. Young adult series too. So. Yeah, but like, I, as long as it's well, no, it, it could be good, like Sabrina, because Sabrina's not bad. Okay, Karen, <laughs> agreed. Well, we... I'm still, I'm still waiting to make myself watch that last season. But do we know when this comes out? Nope. nope. I think it's still in development. Yeah. Okay. They just ordered it. So. They need to develop faster. Thanks. <laughs> get that stuff developed yeah. <laughs> meanwhile uh, over in the world of marvel ign reports marvel gets punisher jessica jones writes back from netflix that means all the defenders and publisher uh, sorry and punisher are back with marvel so that's where it should be that's just yeah. in time for the multiverse just in time for the multiverse of madness do we want to see uh the marvel netflix series be uh reinserted as canon in the mcu yes Yes. I want to see those characters show. I don't want them to try to do those shows again because I don't think they'll be able to capture that lightning and mm -mm. that bottle again. But I do want to see those characters brought into other aspects of the Marvel Universe. And I would love to see how these characters, because the shows were so dark and gritty and different, I would like to see how they can play that into the Marvel Cinematic Universe because the Marvel, Marvel Cinematic Universe will touch on that stuff but it's it usually kind of turns itself back around I mean you've got a much more light and fluffy feel to the movies most of the time not all the time <clears throat> um, um, what was that what was that the, Moon Knight what? series the Midnight um, with Punisher Moon Knight Daredevil <sighs> I don't know. You're the super fan, honey. Damn it. it I'm blanking on it. And that's the problem. Like, I can see Barenthal's Punisher showing up in the Moon Knight show. Oh, yeah. Like, that would be great. Um, I just want more awesome. Charlie Cox, man. I think he's so great as Daredevil. I mean, the, 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 really, it was the casting on all these things was freaking phenomenal, uh, with the exception of Danny Rand. And even he yeah. kind of turned it around in season two of Iron Fist, oh, which is... Dope still just one of those things that blows my mind but uh i i i always thought that there was no real problem with these shows existing within the mcu like there's always going to be the issue of like okay well there's this world ending level threat where are the avengers like <laughs> why are the defenders uh, the only one? they're uh they're, they're doing something else you always got the whole thor's off world thing going on but uh yeah uh, but but it doesn't matter that's just the world of comic books it's mm -hmm fine you have to you have to do you have to suspend a certain degree of disbelief in order to tell superhero stories if you're going to have multiple superheroes that live in new york right but well, the same thing i thought they handled with... all these great and i would love to see them officially like show up on disney plus and i wouldn't mind seeing some continuation yes i'd absolutely love to see these characters continue on in the mcu like in the movies and whatnot but if wandavision has shown us anything is that they can continue to do marvel tv in uh, a way that doesn't that, that really interacts with the actual faces of the movie, and I would love to see them at least finish up the things that they put in they put in motion with mm -hmm. these shows. Like Daredevil, more or less got an ending. You know, mm -hmm. there were still like some unanswered questions, but in particular, like Luke Iron Cage Fist. and Iron Fist were the two that were like, "How how dare you leave me hanging like this?" Mm -hmm. Like. Luke Cage effectively taking over the crime empire and the whole business with the how did Danny get that the, the fist back? What's going on? Like uh, there were so many great questions that I'd love to see more of, and uh, the casting was so great. And uh, I just love uh, love everything's Marvel doing, everything Marvel's doing, and I'm conversely really really looking forward to watching the Snyder Cut with Rift Tracks. Oh, do we know when that will happen? Like the Rift Tracks version, how <laughs> no, fast they can it, get that out? It, it, knowing them immediately yeah, um i wouldn't put it past him but it's i that's set to that's set to drop tomorrow what thursday, thursday i think thursday. Thursday. yeah thursday yeah. everyone's just drooling over it and uh i've oh, seen i've seen it i've seen 
heavy mixed reviews. Yeah, yeah, so. and a lot of the positive reviews have have said things that have been like, no, that doesn't sound like a good thing to me, but okay. <laughs> there are just people who really think that this guy walks on water. And uh, I'm happy for them that they got their, their dream come true of their Snyder cut. May they burn in hell. Sorry, it's what? It's not really a cut. It's, it's a, he just redid the movie. Like No, he did a whole other movie. Yeah. And he, then took the just, other movie and put it in <laughs> Yeah, it's like, like okay. Four hours it was, uh, long. Well, this this was my original vision for the movie. Like, no, seriously, I didn't take feedback from the movie that was actually released and or anything like that. No, this was this was what I was going to do the first time. Promise. Uh huh. For real. So, Sopranos. are you are you for real going to wait for the Rift Tracks version, or do you think you're actually going to want to watch it as it is? Oh, I definitely want to hate watch it. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I don't see myself finding four hours to do that. I mean, I'd probably do it over a. It's going to be set. I think there's going to be four like chapters in it, so maybe I could try to find time to stuff it in like before bed or something like that, just bit by bit. I mean, I watched the original Justice League while I was at work on like a tiny corner of my screen, and even that was too much. But uh, <laughs> your poor screen lit on fire after that. Ah. <sighs> There were like moments of genuine. This is what I want to know. There were mo- sorry to sidetrack no, into Snyder Cut thing again, but uh, there were moments of genuine good in that movie. Like there were pieces of that movie that felt like I was watching a good superhero movie, and, a good comic you know, then book movie. There yeah, were. I agree like, with that. Like when Superman started doing some Superman stuff at the end, and like Flash was kind of happy to be teaming up with them, and like there were just these little, little, little snippets of like. Hey, you can make a really good DC superhero movie. You can do that. Ah, oh, then you went and did that. <laughs> but then they always immediately turn back on it. Like, no, no, grown-ups. <laughs> Grown up. Uh, by the way, that storyline that I was talking about is called Shadowland, which involves... Shadowland, we just played which that in we, Marvel yeah. Storylines 3. All of, all of the street, the, I, I air quote, the street-level characters, which were the, MC, the Netflix Marvel mm-hmm. characters. They were all the street level Marvel characters. Yeah. Not the Avengers. So I would love to see that in the uh the MCU. That was a great storyline. We've been playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance three together and uh this evening uh Karen was the one who beat Kingpin. I beat Kingpin. Awesome. Good job. Oh I, my god, yeah. John it- died, I died, and she was all that was left. She was being Spider Gwen <laughs> and they was there was the Shadowland effectively story it's very very stripped down but it's uh you meet all the the defenders characters like iron fist and uh jessica jones and luke cage and daredevil and whatnot and you uh go and have a big old face off with uh uh kingpin who apparently had a an infinity stone but spoiler alert he didn't he had something else Ooh. that was giving him special powers but it was still a pretty cool super powered fight with fisk and we'll take it away Nice. Well, yeah, just, you know, if we're playing a game together, uh, chances are, it, whatever game it is, Chris is the best at it. And then depending on what game it is, either I'm next best or John's next best. But in this case, I understand the mechanics of fighting games. And if you tell me, like, if you press this button and move the the analog stick this way, you dodge... I can get that, but in the middle of a fight, I'm, my brain doesn't work that way to be like, these are the things I need to do to get away, and I need to do that right now, push and the then button, I need to the do button, this the other button, button combo. <laughs> right? I'm very button mashy in a fighting game. I've gotten to the point where I've been playing this character long enough that I understand which buttons to mash together to be most effective, <laughs> but I'm still just mashing buttons. Um, and occasionally I'm like, oh yeah, I have this super attack thing, and I like press it, and it does stuff, and like whatever but like if if we're fighting a boss and it's down to me i'm the only one left we're fucked (laughs) (laughs) we're just fucked but there was like this chris had done just enough as wolverine stabbing wilson fisk in the butt um (laughs) that i was able to finish him off and i was so proud of myself and like ellie gave me a huge hug and a huge high five she's like i'm so proud of you mommy and i'm like i'm proud of me too i immediately see karen throwing the controller down laughing pointing at chris's face pointing at john's face like oh i rule this roost yes uh i did it she's pointing at fisk's face she's like yeah (laughs) take that you big bald bastard exactly nice congratulations that was my triumph 
I want Evan to play a video game with me. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we should play Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 together. <laughs> Is there a way? For, never mind. Can you kill each other on Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3? No. 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 Oh. It's cooperative. You can't, and it's so a game is... that has Moon Knight in it. <laughs> so is Cuphead. So is... We uh, worked together on Cuphead. Well, Cuphead is brutally difficult. <laughs> yeah, but what was... He's blaming me for this, guys. Notice who gets blamed for the fact <laughs> that the game is hard. from your grave. Altered Beast. Oh, Altered, Altered Beast. <laughs> yes, okay. okay. I did troll this you a little the on that one. This was That was the point. <laughs> right? I didn't expect you to hold a three-year grudge, honey. <laughs> oh. It'll be longer. <laughs> Deathbed kind of a situation. Oh my goodness. I still don't forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> well, if anyone else wants to play video games with me, because my spouse will not. Marvel, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 now? Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. It's on I Switch, don't... and you can unlock Moon Knight as a playable character. Yeah, but we don't have a Switch. Is it on I'm surprised you didn't buy one for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Is it only on Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3? I mean, is it only on Switch? Yeah, it is. Wow. Nintendo published it. Wow. Son of a bitch. I'm going to have to buy Marvel. I'm going to have to buy a Switch, honey. Anywho. Okay. Let's, All right. Let's, next let's, up let's from uh, EW.com, Annie Murphy straddles two worlds and first look at AMC's Kevin Can Fuck Himself. Um, I did not see this. Uh, at all, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to look at the trailer. What's this? What's this all about? Uh, it's great. It's, it's a yeah. play on all these uh, corny sitcoms where, like, a you know very accommodating woman is married to like a loud, obnoxious jackass, mm -hmm. and like it's played for laughs when really it's like a kind of a horrible do domestic situation. And so there's like a parent like in the trailer it shows two styles and one is like classic sitcom it's you know that kind of lighting and camera setups and i think there's even an audience or piped in laughter where she like endures all these situations and then it turns kind of like grayer and like that's her perspective and she's like this is bullshit and like it shows how she ended up in this situation and her plans to like get out of her marriage because like it's horrible uh and it just looks like a really interesting show and it's got annie murphy from schitt's creek um mm -hmm. alexis i love this idea that's fantastic because i have i have often pointed out the uh the the sitcom trope that i hate of the fat doofy idiot husband and like the super hot wife that's like mm -hmm. dressing in the background basically just there to set up jokes yeah. yeah, and, um, well, oh, the title is a play on a, a show that was on CBS or was planned for CBS, which was canceled, called Kevin Can Wait. Yeah, it was another Kevin James uh, yeah. joint. That was on for a couple of seasons, I think. So, I think I think the point of the title is that and there have been enough similar uh punny titles like that that like that name now is just synonymous with that kind of doofy husband character uh so i like it i'm looking forward to it uh it is i'm i've lost everything that i was ever <laughs> interested in uh i am i did watch the trailer it, this, the, the coming to amc great. summer 2021 there you go this summer thank you well that's pretty awesome I will happily watch that with you. I say Yay! that that should be an episode pick when it comes out. I'm calling yeah. it. <sighs> so let's see. Tool Time returns, a new series with Tim Allen and Richard Karn. Uh, this comes to us from the New York Post. Uh, I, so I threw that one up there. That was I, I discussed it uh, last week. Um, Assembly I don't required. remember the the details of it. Is it just a tool time show, or no, no, is it a home improvement thing? It is. A, it's called Assembly Required, and it is a oh, a, it's a, a contest game show. show. It's a, yeah, it's that that competitive build this thing game show. It was interesting. Um, I'm not a big fan of everybody having to be separated. Like if I if I want, I like my competition shows where everybody's in the same room, and you know what I'm saying kind of mm -hmm. thing and that's not what this is because of covid yeah. they're, they're letting them 
do all their I remember this conversation jobs in now. their own shop. So, but I, they still have the chemistry that they always did. So, if you like building stuff, it was a neat. It was an interesting watch. I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> IGN.com. <laughs> IGN.com tells us that Marvel's Loki gets a new June release date. It's coming out June 11th. There you go. Uh, It's been pushed back from May to June. Okay, whatever. I think there's enough Marvel stuff coming out this year that we can live with that. Yeah, I'm fine. (laughs) Let me breathe. I I have nothing else to add. This show looks great, and uh, I have... Especially after WandaVision being so weird and wonderful, this show also looks very weird and wonderful, but in a very different kind of way. I think the real wild card now is uh, what exactly is is uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier going to be like? But it kind of looks great, so I guess we'll I see. feel like that's going to be like the palate cleanser. It's going to be like a normal adventure show. I feel mm-hmm. so that they can go from like we're testing, like we're 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 testing our audience with WandaVision. Okay, mm-hmm. here's what you're you're the norm. Then we're gonna test you again with Loki. But Chris said this last time. They don't need to test us anymore. Like we get it. You're awesome, Marvel. Just oh, do what you fucking most want. Of, most of us know that. Like those of yes. But then you know you have that vocal audience that like, oh, the show is so slow. Why is it in black and white? Yeah, Shut I mean, I, I will say. It. Uh, in in reference to the the WandaVision stuff, I did actually carry the conversation uh, into another audience, and and it was surprising to me that there were actually people who didn't care for it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand. Uh, and basically, one of one of the people I was talking to said that if they hadn't packaged episodes one and two together, the the show would never they wouldn't have watched the show because they. They didn't care for that. They just felt like it was a play on nostalgia, and they they still argue that it didn't really make sense for the show and didn't need to be there. So, well, everybody's entitled to their to opinion, wrong. even if it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. I I'll, I'll, conversely, like, yes, that that audience that that reaction was always going to be there on something this bizarre. But on the same token, I don't think Disney expected that show to do as well as it did. I, I can't imagine that they did. I mean, I knew, I know that they probably thought that they had something special, but they're also smart enough to realize that something this weird, especially coming out of the MCU, that's not cookie cutter, but there is a certain tone that is expected from the MCU, even though it is wildly different from movie to movie, like Guardians of the Galaxy is a totally different tone from Captain America and the Winter Soldier, but... At the same time, they are very much part of the same cinematic universe, and they do work together. But the uh, WandaVision was freaking out there, and the fact that it did just incredibly well, uh, I think probably came came a little bit by surprise to them, and, and probably made them feel better about more weird shows like Loki coming up. So, I don't know. We'll see. That's not like they could go back and fix Loki now. If if the WandaVision was a miserable failure and people all hated it and Loki was going to be another really strange, trippy thing, then they wouldn't exactly have enough time to course correct properly. But who who the heck knows? They're, they're Disney. Mm-hmm. They're doing their thing. But hey, speaking of something that's not owned by Disney, uh, <laughs> this was just about the most exciting news I had heard in a long time. Uh, Variety.com reports Nickelodeon launches Avatar Studios will expand World of Avatar, The Last Airbender, and Legend of Korra. Give it to me now. Is it out yet? Is it available? I want it now. <laughs> Can I watch Hook it right now? me up. I was this so excited about this wonderful. that we posted this twice in chat. I had to delete mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, we don't know anything about what they're, what exactly they're going to do, but I am in for pretty much whatever it is because I loved Avatar and I loved Korra. And I just want more of this world. We were just talking about it recently, how I want more things to happen in this universe. I want to, I want to see the story of uh, Aang as an adult. I I want to see, I want to see those characters all grown up more than just that flashback scene with Yakone and uh, Legend of Korra. I want to see, um, what's it? uh, The, uh, the graphic novels that they released. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so much cool stuff. They did the whole Zuko's mom thing. Mm hmm. I would love to see that animated. Uh, that would just be amazing. Uh, so, who knows? I want to know. I want to see more stories of previous avatars. Like, what were their lives really like? 
uh, there was apparently a book about uh, Avatar Kyoshi. So, yeah. And it's supposed to be really good. So sign me up. I am all in for this. And I'm also strangely still excited about the uh, Avatar show that's coming to Netflix, if that is, in fact, still happening. Oh, I hope uh, so. Who the heck knows? I mean, I hope it won't be a dumpster fire with, you know, since these guys left. But who knows, man? I don't. All I know is this is really exciting news. Yeah. Yeah. It's always good to, for a, a solid property to have a good home. Yeah, giving them all a uh, really the creators of this this franchise, but like getting getting their own studio to just kind of play in this world and expand it is on one hand it is somewhat scary because there's always the you always run the risk that the more you expand the universe, the the more you realize that maybe it was just a maybe it was just a flash in the pan. But I don't think it was because of how different Avatar and Korra were and how great they both were. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like there's there's just so many stories to tell in these universes, and I want to see them. <laughs> cool. Yeah, this is one of those times where I'm like, you know, the please explore more. Please tell us more about this. Don't leave it up to us in our imaginations. Like, just give it to us. Tell us. We, it's it's a world that we want to be more involved in, like. I don't know. I guess Avatar for me is what Harry Potter is for other people, where it's just like, yes, I want everything wizards all the time. I mean, I still want that with Harry Potter, so what am I saying? <laughs> yeah, really, what was that? <laughs> they don't have to be mutually exclusive. Yeah. Just keep yeah. them coming. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, next next one I'm probably going to pass off to Karen, but the uh, New York Times gives us the Golden Globes winners 2021. What should we care about? Um, Where the hell did it go? Uh, <laughs> it starts with an oh. um, so. I see. I got lost because uh, because the Avatar was in there twice. <laughs> I was like, wait, what is this? We skipped it. Oh, no. No, nope, uh, I didn't. tried to delete it. It just Facebook hates me. Facebook does hate you. It's true. It told me. Yeah, um, there's a memo. I believe it. The Golden Globes itself was the, the uh, what do you call it? The show, the award show. Yeah. Was dumb. <laughs> Okay. Um, it was weird. It was all done by remote and like it was Tina Fey and Amy Poehler hosting, but they were on opposite coasts and they kept like putting them in the same shot together and splitting it like they were standing next to each other and they had the Ugh. same background. It was like bad. Um, but the shows that won, it was like, I don't know what's ha- happening if our taste is getting better or no no no, 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 no. we we haven't changed they are meeting us i guess i guess that's it because like almost every every tv show that won a golden globe was like something we watched and liked uh the crown schitt's creek and the queen's gambit were the big winners and ted lasso um yeah so yay golden globes <laughs> yeah i looked that's through that and i was like I see the same things repeated a lot here. That's yep. usually, you know, that's the sign of like, that's correct. Like, it's a good show. You know, The Crown was a, is a good show. Um, Shit's Creek. I mean, that, Shit's Creek was taking comedy, uh, was taking uh, awards from all sorts of uh, events, aren't they? Like, they were mm-hmm. nominated. Yep. They have been the toast everything. of the award season. So. Rightly so. Good, Not good, only good. because the show is good, but because it's gotten us all through this last year. It's very true. <laughs> <sighs> Moving on to more exciting news that's related to television. Nerdist.com uh, wow. reports that Party Down is returning returning for a new season. Where the heck did this come from? I don't know, but give it to me now. <laughs> I'm into this. This show is great. Yeah. I, I totally forgot about the show until I saw this article. <laughs> I, you know what's funny? I've seen it, like, parts of it, multiple, I guess, segments of the show throughout its existence uh, from different people. Like, the first time I ever saw it, a roommate was watching it, and 
I just was passing by and the next thing I knew it was like two episodes later and I had just been standing there watching over their shoulder <laughs> <laughs> and he was like do you want to sit down and I was like nah no, I got and things then, to do but I'll, I'll wait <laughs> and then yeah uh, it, like Evan I've, I've actually you've watched an episode mm-hmm. at some point while we since we started dating and yeah it's just been piecemeal but every time <laughs> I watch that show I love it I'm I'm looking forward to it coming back, so I have an excuse to just start it from the beginning and then catch up to where they are. Can yeah, really and I feel like the the gem. premise of the show is one that uh, lends itself to uh, a not a reboot, but like a I don't know revisitation treatment because like for this co- catering company to still be around and like some of at least some of the original characters still to be connected to it is just such a funny idea to me <laughs> well they did that with um oh, what was that the the camp what hot american summer hot american summer where you know you should, that that was a well crafted continuation of that story mm-hmm. yeah and i think that kind of thing can work for this too mm-hmm. concur but you here here let me help you with the next transition you know what can't work <laughs> <laughs> I just don't even know. BuzzFeed is reporting that the casting for the live-action Powerpuff Girls reboot is truly made of sugar and spice and everything nice, and I don't know that I agree. I mean, I guess if you were going to do this, this would be a good cast. But But I don't (laughs) know that you should do this. Still having trouble getting on board, huh? Yeah, I just can't. And it's nothing against these actresses. Don't, don't, it, it, no. No, nothing at nothing all. Like, it's this, the general concept. I feel like, I mean, okay, you re- you want to explore this? Go for it. But it seems to me like a strange betrayal of the spirit of the original property. But then again, the hell do I know? So anyway, <laughs> the cast is uh, Chloe Bennett um, yep. as Blossom. Um, of Chloe Bennett, you may know from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Dove Cameron from The Descendants is playing Bubbles. And Yana Peralt from Jagged Little Pill on Broadway will be playing Buttercup. Well, if they're trying to get a certain audience, then they've done well to cast Dove Cameron. Um, and you guys probably don't know what The Descendants is. But since I have friends who have kids who are a little bit older than our kids are, um, who that, are obsessed with the Descendants, is that an animated thing? Hold on, um, I'm googling. I'm not sure if it's an animated or live action, oh. but I know it's like, um, it's like the children of fairy tale characters as high schoolers. And okay, are we okay? Cause... It's like a tween tween show kind of thing, and it's. Very, very popular among. Okay, because I just googled girls. it and it came up with a George Clooney movie, so I'm guessing that's, that's a not the right one. Different movie <laughs> that is also called The Descendants. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but yeah, I know it's very popular with like tween girls, and so if they're looking to bring over some of that audience, then then they picked a good one, and you know, Lord knows we like Chloe Bennett. Um, yeah. But yeah. The descent- so wait, is this is this? Hold on, because now I'm looking at it. Is this show animated? Because I thought there was. I thought the show wasn't. No, 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 no. This is going to be a live action Powerpuff Girls thing. No, no. About I the mean, Powerpuff the, Girls being older and jaded. I mean the Descendants TV show. Oh, the Descendants. Oh, I think there was a an animated show that was a similar pre- premise. Okay. Because I heard about the Descendants being a live action thing, and now I'm looking at it, and it says original. I don't know. Okay. So I think there was an original. No, it looks animated. I'm out of touch. Whatever. But it is. Hopefully, people just like it. Colorful. <laughs> like, I have friends whose kids um, dressed up as characters of this for Halloween. Like that's the kind of thing that it is. It's, well. It's a Disney. I'm seeing joint. a live it, action. I'm seeing a live action version. Yeah, it, but it's okay. So just, it's very colorful. So mm-hmm. if you're far enough away, 
from the image, it looks like a cartoon. Yeah, that's what I was. <laughs> yeah, because the the first image I see is uh, Cruella de Vil is stuck in my head. It's not Cruella. It's Maleficent. Yeah, a woman dressed like Maleficent. So good movie. Yeah. Okay, where are we? <clears throat> Let's talk about food. Mm, all day, every day. It's the best thing ever. Uh, All right, so uh, TV, avclub.com. HBO Max is basically making Nailed It, but with competent bakers. So uh, in our house, I think, I don't remember how it happened, right? Was it something that you found It was me. I did it. Uh -uh. Uh, Our Our daughter daughter got into um, baking. Hell yeah. And Good job, Karen. Thanks. I, feel like that I didn't could be really bad with a small child and a lot of mess, but Well, it's our mess to clean up. Okay. But she likes doing it. Good. And uh, so I went in search of what are things that you can do for a kid who likes to bake besides get them a play kitchen because we have one. We have all the play food you can imagine. She has an apron, she has all the like pretend food cooking utensils and everything. She has all the toys like but for a kid who actually wants to bake things, what can you do for them? And one of the things that this article I rec- I read recommended was a YouTube channel um, by this woman, Rosanna po- Pansino, uh, who has a YouTube cooking show called Nerdy Nummies. Oh, Good name. It's really cute. Um, she made, she's been doing it since 2011, so 10 years now. Um, and she makes all these things like... Um, Ellie's favorite is she makes princess cakes with Anna, Anna and Elsa dolls. That the the skirt of the doll is a cake. Mm-hmm. I've seen that. And um, God, she made Spider Man ca- candy apples that look like Spider Man. She made Koopa Shell uh, cake pops. She Cute. makes Minecraft treats. She makes like anything that's nerdy. She takes and makes a pastry spin on it. It's really cute. So. Uh, I started her watching this this YouTube channel and she immediately became obsessed, but only with like four of the same videos watching it over and over <laughs> again. Um, and then like a week later after she gets hooked on this, this story comes into our feed that's like this woman is getting her own a baking show on HBO Max. So, like we got in just under the wire. We nice. knew her just before she was like a superstar. <laughs> you knew her before it was cool? Yes. It's nice. fun watching some of the, the YouTube videos with her because you can see like incredibly humble beginnings. Like she's in this tiny little kitchen with like her cell phone camera baking something that looks cute with like a boxed cake mix. And then like you see like several years later, she's on like a r- really nice kitchen with a set in the background and uh, she's wearing a lot more makeup and hair and stuff, and uh, it's it's a it's an interesting progression to see. Like this is someone who came up with a YouTube channel that she cared about and slowly grew an organic audience. And so it's not like something that just immediately blew up. It's like a it's one of those good YouTube stories. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a it's neat to see, and I'm I'm very happy for. Her. And they showed me an episode recently where she got to meet Shigeru Miyamoto, and then he played Mario Kart with her in her house, and I was insanely jealous. Oh my god, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah, the, it, this was one where the, the kids had stumbled upon while they were over at their uh, grandmoms, and then when they came home, they told me about it. And they were like, and there was some Nintendo guy there with a weird name, and Ellie goes, Shigeru Miyamoto! <laughs> wow. That's my girl. <laughs> that's your girl. <laughs> and I said, Okay. <laughs> When Daddy finishes work, we're gonna watch this with him, but don't tell him who the special guest is. Oh, yeah! So Miyamoto and Bill Trinan walk out. And I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And then like they talked about ge- all these Wii U games were coming out. Cause it was years ago, and uh, I'd never even heard of this before. And uh, then he played. He and Bill played Mario Kart with her in her living room, and it was awesome. <laughs> I really wish I could have done that, too. <laughs> well, you just have to go back in time 10 years and have your own YouTube cooking channel, dear. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll make some phone Ways calls, to Chris. meet Miyamoto. <laughs> it's got a whole list. I saw him once. <laughs> <laughs> it was in proximity at E3. It was awesome. 
Anyways, uh, so let's see. This next news story is pretty cool, <laughs> it's, and it just got cooler the further I read. Comicbook.com reports Star Wars Gendy Tartakovsky's Clone Wars is coming to Disney+. Plus Now, uh, this is the original Clone Wars cartoon that was uh, on Cartoon Network. There are these little micro-episodes, and they're kind of amazing. And they were uh, very quickly dubbed non-canon because they are very uh, Tartakovsky, let's say. Uh, they, they play <laughs> fast and loose with what the Force can do. Uh, there's like Mace Windu taking on an entire legion of battle droids with his bare hands, which is amazing. But it's like, okay, th- I, how does that work in the movies? And it just doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't do that. So, okay. Uh, but this also was the where the character of General Grievous was created. They gave Tartakovsky the the role of creating the character of the General Grievous that they were going to use in the movies. That's and awesome. He, he created an amazing, terrifying character. Like the idea of him was like this cross between Darth Vader and a droid that was a droid that was powerful enough to fight Jedi because he was created with that specific purpose of being strong enough to wipe out Jedi. And if you've never seen the episode where they introduce the character, it's, it's Tartakovsky at his best because it shows like Kiarimundi and a handful of Padawan running away. And they are absolutely terrified of the way uh, of general Grievous. And he's hunting the Jedi and he like, he kills almost everybody. Like, Kiaramundi barely gets away and he like fights on his hands and he's this amazing spider robot thing that they then completely neutered and turned into a joke in the movies because George Lucas was like, that's really cool, but we kind of want this guy to be more of a joke. So they make him cough all the time and that it was the most heartbreaking thing because uh, the, when this came out before uh, Revenge of the Sith, I had a, a really high hopes because General Grievous is going to be in this movie, and that's amazing. And he was nothing like a fraction of as cool as he was in this this animated series. But that stuff besides, uh, even though it's not canon anymore, this these are just really amazing short pieces of animation that are just amazing to watch. But if you read a little further down, they're not alone. The Star Wars Boba Fett holiday special segment and the Ewok movies are coming to Disney Plus as well. Nice. <laughs> I have never Wars seen needs. the Ewok movies. Uh, Caravan of Courage and Ewoks, The Battle for Endor. I have never seen them. I am... Uh, I'm just very excited. <laughs> Will those I be have considered seen canon? the Boba Fett thing, but... <laughs> What's that? Will those be... Con- are those canon? Like, those... I doubt it, but I also don't don't know that they contradict anything. I don't know. I've never seen them. So, this well, the holiday special has to be canon because that's where the Fett came from. Well, that's where the character first debuted, but I don't know that that makes the holiday special canon. (laughs) Well, the holiday special is a freaking fever dream. It doesn't make it. Yeah, sense. but still, it's a can- they paid it's a canonic homage fever to it, dream. But they're not putting the whole holiday special in. It's just the Boba Fett animated segment. Oh, uh, okay. Because even Disney Plus isn't crazy enough to put that on there. Like people would watch it, but do they want people to see this? Do because I don't think they do. <laughs> I don't think we need to see a Boba. Uncle, what is it? Oh, is a it? Chewbacca's dad or grandfather? Uh, ogling uh, some woman on TV. I, I think it wasn't it B. Arthur? <laughs> it, that wasn't who he was ogling. B. Arthur <laughs> does have an entire musical number where she's a space bartender. That's but, right. <laughs> wow. That's, but yeah, these really Ewok movies. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing them because I've never seen them and I'm sure they are not great because they're good old <laughs> class and classic made for TV movies with child actors and Ewoks and yeah, yeah. I'm in. <laughs> I I can't believe they're putting these on there, but that's uh that's pretty special. Way to go Disney Plus. My only contribution is to say that I got, I saw this story first, so I got to put it in the feed and Chris was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. Did you, were had you, no idea were you was in coming. the room when he reacted cuz I bet it was good. I was not in the room. <sighs> I was audibly excited to to see that 
that happen. That's really cool. Uh, and you know, they, I feel like Disney's got a got a good thing going there, throwing up all these things that were previously never available, like uh, all the Muppet shows that went up recently. That was yep. that did great. That was yeah. uh, that was well, a lot of talk the about content, that content. They might as well just put it somewhere, <laughs> like use it. Don't don't vault that crap like they're, they're known to, to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, they are doing bits. Like, I think there are a couple of episodes missing, like skits missing from the Muppet show, uh, mostly due to musical rights issues. Uh, but the other stuff, they're not really censoring. They're just putting up the warnings ahead of time and say, like, this features some racial stereotypes that aren't cool. And I like I really appreciate that they're doing that kind mm-hmm. of stuff instead of just, you know, going in there and, and censoring it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, HollywoodReporter.com, Killing Eve to End with Season 4 on AMC BBC America in 2022. So I just get d- angrier the more further I read into that headline. So just to preface, <laughs> I, when we were starting to get ready to record, I looked and, and both Angela and I were mistaken about how much news we had. So I quickly went to find something that we hadn't reported on. So the next couple are in that vein. <laughs> So, didn't I just notice that we have spoken a bit about Killing Eve, and I know we were upset that it will end, but now at least it got it. It's next year? Is that? Is that next it? year. Oh, ang- good things come to an end eventually. I'm so angry. Sorry. Like, what do you mean it's ending? What do you mean it's not until next year? Are you kidding me? God damn it. <laughs> Last year was long enough, and now I gotta wait another year. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. But at least it's not <sighs> over now. There you go. <sighs> <laughs> it's not make it any better. So, uh, Screen Rant, Star Girl <laughs> Season Two, first look photo reveals DC villain Eclipso. I've never seen this show, but this looks awful. Okay, so this is the only reason I put this in here is because of that Eclipso character. I have I have been involved with comic books for f- nearly 40 years. Never in my wildest dreams would I ever have guessed that Eclipso would end up on a television show at some point in time. But it's happening. <laughs> it's just the fact that it exists. It needed to be shared. It because... needs to be shared. Look at this. Uh, my my uh, interactions, I guess, with Eclipso were from Green Lantern. Like, that's where I knew him from. But this show is shockingly still on. And they are digging through that barrel of DC characters. That do not involve Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, or Aquaman. So. There you go. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've never... I've read a few things with Eclipso in it. Very few. He's got persuasion um, powers. Like he can make people do things that he wants them to do. I oh. still am kind of mystified that there's a Star Girl TV show. That's another. That's another key point of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Fair. shocked that it's still on. So yeah, like n- not even that it happened, but that it's still happening. Yeah, and whew, I don't know, man. This is a. We gotta get it makes me not CW that sad now. that I checked out of the 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 CW verse. Yeah, I, it's so. That all right? So that what one from watching this show? I've watched a couple of episodes of Star Girl, and I feel like that was in the Arrow verse, like that vein of storytelling where it, it's just it feels like at towards the end everything got fluff. Now with this Superman and Lois show, it doesn't feel that way, at least right now in the first episode. So it's, I like CW apparently gives seasons away for free and just lets people run. Yeah, they sure do. So there it is. That's it's, you have to do something really wrong to get canceled from the CW. Yeah. Or just say you don't want to do it anymore after exactly. 14 years. <laughs> how is that happening, though? Like, out of curiosity, how is it that CW's shows are still going? Because they're supported by... Uh, these shows are supported by Warner Brothers. Yeah, but even Warner Brothers, like, their movies suck. So, like... Still Warner except Brothers. Except the, an- the animated stuff. Let's, let's not... 
Um, still Warner Brothers. Yeah, but like every department has a budget. Like, how do they still have a budget? Like, I just, I don't know. Okay, that's fine. Apparently they've got like a Scrooge McDuckie and... <laughs> Vault. Somebody's watching this shit. I don't know. They have a network. They got to put stuff on it. Yep. I still stand by the questions I'm asking. <laughs> this, uh, like, so far all I'm hearing is wizardry, bribery, <laughs> and Satan. So, there's a deal yeah. with Satan did somewhere. It. That's all. Wizard did it. <laughs> wizard did it. Yep. Anyway, uh, Nerdist, let let sorry for your loss fill your Elizabeth Olsen grief gap. Um. Who posted this, and what is it about? Oh, okay. So, um, thanks. You didn't have to include that one, but uh, I appreciate you. So, this was basically just in case anybody uh, watching WandaVision really got attached to Elizabeth Olsen and her acting. Um, and also, for anybody who wanted to try a Facebook property, <laughs> like... <laughs> Uh, wow. I was very surprised when I started reading this because I just got excited when I saw that she was in something else. And um, also the person that is standing next to her is uh, an actress who she did the, if, if I'm not mistaken, she was uh, Raya the, and the Last Dragon. She was the voice actress who uh, was Raya. So um, she's also Rose Tico in Star Wars. Yeah, and that, of course, that's where I was going next. <laughs> totally. Yes. Is that uh, written somewhere in this article? Who is that? <laughs> no, anyway. she, was, she was one of the main characters who was introduced in uh, The Last Jedi that kind of got sidelined. unceremoniously sidelined in oh. the last movie. And, like, people hated her so much in that Star Wars movie that they cyberbullied her S right off of Twitter and stuff. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Okay. What? Did not know that. No, people neither did I. People are horrible. Yeah, okay. people are, are awful, especially I mean, Star Wars fans. The fandom menace. The, the fandom menace. Yes, indeed. Uh, I mean, I thought she was perfectly fine in that movie. There were a couple of bad was, choices, but it's there a Star were some Wars. Really, much worse choices. choices. I'm sure. Well, well, I'm yeah, really so, glad that she's st like that. She didn't leave acting because I thought she had did a great performance, and I think it's awesome that she uh, got the lead in Raya and the Last Dragon, and which is a, it's, what that's a. Great that was a great movie, movie by we the way. We watched that, that recently. Um, yeah, well, okay, coming from a uh, living under a rock perspective, I think she's great. <clears throat> and I was kind of excited to find this because I would like to see her uh, not as an animated character, but as a real person in something. And clearly I didn't care enough about the Star Wars franchise to notice that she was in it. So sorry, Chris. Um, <laughs> Apologize to me. Apologize to her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Hollywood. I just don't care. Okay. But anywho, yeah, this, that's all this was, was if you were looking for a follow up, uh, basically this is supposed to be, there's a trailer in the article. Uh, this is just supposed to be something where they both really shined and it's a Facebook, it, Facebook watch. I legit never knew that Facebook had any sort of property where they were creating anything. Um, I shouldn't be surprised. In fact, I guess I'm I'm really not now that I'm talking about it. But yeah, so that's all that was. If you if you're interested in it and you want to look into it, great. It is a show about grief, um, and how it affects people and how these women are handling their grief. Uh, that's that's it. Like if you don't want to be sad, don't watch it. But I think that it's really really it just looks good. So. Go watch the trailer and make your own choice. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that seems to be about the long and the short of it, right? We uh, don't have anything else we need to hit? No. No. Okay. Fantastic. Other than a picture of our dog who decided to roll around in the mud and is now filthy. Yeah, but she's Two still days after cute. I gave her a bath. That's what dogs do. Dang. That's where I the stupid dog filth. reference came from, by the way, at the beginning of the show. Love that guy. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks everyone for listening. That's our show. You can get in touch with us at malletgeekade.com as well as all flavors of social media that we inhabit. I'm going to rewrite this script because Geekade's going through some changes. But in the meantime, you can like us on Facebook at Geekade, find us on Instagram at Geekade, subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels for all our latest video content, and follow us on Twitter at the underscore Geekade or follow this show specifically at Twepcast. You can also find us individually on the interwebs. You can find me on Twitter at Geekade Chris. Uh, Karen, where can people find you? Shoot underscore the underscore moon. And Evan, where can people find you? Geekade underscore Evan. And Ev uh, Angie, not Evan. 
where can people find you? I'm like Evan 2.0. It's cool. Uh, they can find me at twitch.tv slash laracraft13. Sweet. If you're interested in more information about anything we discussed tonight, be sure to check out our show notes. And while you're at it, you can also subscribe to this and any of our other wonderful podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Stitcher, where if you're super nice, you can leave us a review because any and all feedback is welcome and appreciated. Again, always remember to keep your eyes on geekade.com for more fresh original content. Back to you, Chris. Why, thank you, Chris. What's our homework this week? Well, I'm glad you asked. Our homework this week, in case you forgot from last week, is Mystery Science Theater 3000 Pod People. <laughs> I'm so excited. Hear the engines roll now, people. Hear the engines roll now. Bees on pie. <laughs> I'm finally going to understand some of your humor. It's going to be great. Remember what happened I'm with Syphil and Ollie, honey. Okay. It, it may not be that great. I stand corrected. What did we watch? <laughs> okay. This is way... I mean, I'm just kidding. Hard, it's I'm hard not. to say it's way more grounded than Syphil and Ollie, but there's a reason there's a much larger Mr. Science Theater fan base than Syphil and Ollie fan base. That is true. I am the center of that Venn diagram, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's a weird graph. It's only one. <laughs> the center of that Venn diagram. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, that's going to be it for us. Uh, come back in a couple of weeks to talk about one of my favorite pieces of television ever. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Chris. I'm Karen. I'm Angie. <laughs> Tepidly high hopes. <laughs> Good night. And this concludes our broadcast day.